Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is another sponsored video sponsored by Silviu for Anonymous. And here's Anonymous' story. Dear Ollie, I do not know where to begin. I am still learning about narcissism and narcissistic abuse. I will try to keep it simple. I have tried to tell my story to others, and I immediately get funny looks like I am crazy or that I should get over it and or you will be fine look. I am a broken woman and desperately need help. I am only child and both parents are narcissists. In 2013 I moved to a new town to start a new fresh life because I was miserable in old town. I was involved in a five-year cheating relationship and finally decided to leave when I caught him with a girl in the shower. I suspect that he may have been a narcissist, but I'm not sure. During that five-year relationship, I got a DUI, lost my home, lost credibility at work, had ulcer surgery. I was underweight, 5'6", 105 pounds. I felt like I was, I was the only, I felt like moving was the only way I was going to be able to get out of extremely intense relationship. I also wanted to move closer to my children's father so that he can assist me with raising them because they were going through some trouble in teenage emotional things. I felt overwhelmed and I was emotion and I was an emotional mess due to the breakup. At least I thought he was the reason why I was a mess. <clears throat> Two weeks after moving into the new town I met a man at a restaurant. Let's call him Wolf. Wolf was not my type, nor was I attracted to him, but he was sweet and he appeared to be caring. He was, he was nothing, I mean nothing like my previous ex. He was tall, athletic, handsome, charming, fun, excellent dresser, organized, stable, and wealthy. Wolf was tall, one thing I did like about him. Out of, out of shape, average looking, messy, unstable, and homeless. I did not know at the time. When I met him, he had a 13-year-old he had a 13-year-old daughter, good girl with him. He just seemed like he was a good person going through a hard time. He reminded me a little bit of my dad, no charm, not funny, serious, hard working, and expressed a strong desire for stability and family. He helped me so much to settle in a new town in new town and was extremely attentive to my children's needs, so I was extremely grateful. My children's father, on the other hand, failed to tell me he was expecting a child. Two months after we moved to the new town, he had a child, he had a child, had another child the following year and got married. My children's father was not able to help with my children as he promised before I moved because he had his hand full with two babies. I knew he had a girlfriend, but I did not know she was expecting. His family helped a little, but since he was married, I did not want to cause any problems, so I kept my distance. Sorry, story long already. I will cut short here the following of events that happened. Feel free to skip over whatever material you like. Summer 2013, moved to a new town and met Wolf and Daughter. Daughter visiting from Florida from, for summer. End of 2013, asked me to be his girlfriend because he was in love. I declined because I wanted to be friends and did not want any commitment. I wanted to date others and take things slow. Fall 2013, we had a fall, we had a fallout because I didn't tell him I was going out of town on a date. We were not a couple, mind you. He found out and accused me of being a cheater and promiscuous. I will admit I was a bit promiscuous at the time. However, both partners knew about each other. Mid-fall 2013, he apologized for calling me names and claimed that he loved me so much and just got jealous. I forgave him and we remained friends. The end of 2013, daughter came to visit for his parents' anniversary. He invited me to an anniversary party and met his parents and the whole family. Parents and family seemed like good people. His father pulled me to the side and stated that his son loved me so much and that he will take care of me. His father pronounced that I am his future daughter-in-law. I had a really good time and felt welcomed. I really felt he loved me then. He proposed to me shortly after that. End winter 2013, he broke up with me on New Year's Day because he claimed that I kissed somebody else on New Year's countdown. 
Quite honestly, I don't remember because I was too drunk. I told him I did not want to sit at the bar because I already had a few drinks and that I'd rather sit by him, DJ Booth. He insisted that I mingle while he was working. I apologized profusely and expressed how awful I felt. I really didn't mean to hurt him. I blacked out and don't remember. You know getting drunk's not an excuse, right? He asked me for the ring back and called off the engagement and left. I didn't chase after him because I thought maybe we were just not meant for each other. We argued a lot and he never wanted to discuss the problems. He came back a week later and forgave me. He was in tears and stated that he has never been so in love with someone and he can't live without me. He proposed again and I accepted because I felt guilty. 2014, Wolf left a few times and came back. Later I find he was going out, going back and forth with his ex and myself. Shortly after I became pregnant, something was telling me it was a bad idea, so I told him that maybe we should wait. I'm glad I didn't abort because I love my son. He threatened to leave me and guilt me into, and guilt me into keeping the child. Of course, in the beginning, I was his queen, and towards the end, I was insecure, delusional, irrational, crazy, and hard to deal with. I hate to say it was right, thanks to my lovely parents, and I'm glad you said that before I did. Because I think this, look, I think a lot of the problem here lies, not that he doesn't have some issues, but a lot of the problem lies with you. You're talking about this issue, but you haven't told me about your past, and that's the problem here. This seems like a very immature relationship you're involved in. <clears throat> 2015 abandoned me when my son was two and a half months old. He caught me off from all communication and offered no help. I had no family and two teenagers to look out for. My parents moved across country to help me out with my kids. Later I found out my mother only found out my mother only moved in because she hated her job and wanted a reason to leave job and move away from my father's family. I rented a bigger house to accommodate my parents and give my children their own room back. Fast forward when my parents moved in is when I discovered about narcissism. I learned that both my parents are narcissistic too. The more I learned about it and started healing, the more I saw the mass falling especially when I shared the info when I shared the info to them they would get upset every time I watched YouTube videos August 2016 my parents left the next day after an argument and left me hanging with all the bills same thing Wolf did they told the whole family that I kicked them out which is far from the truth I needed them for my healing process I later I discovered that my mother had already an I had already an exit plan the whole time. I started drinking heavily because I could not handle the heightened anxiety and fear. I was in constant stress because I wasn't able to handle all the bills by myself and the added cost for daycare. I pawned everything I owned that had any value, maxed out all my credit cards, and voluntarily repoed my car. Of course, Wolf wanted nothing to do with my son and was only giving me 150 a month. The state dropped the ball and would not modify my order. I was severely depressed and my teenager started to get into trouble. I cried myself to sleep and stopped talking to people. I repeated the same behavior when Wolf left. 2017, I finished my lease agreement and started no contact with parents. I moved into an affordable residence and managed to save and buy a car with cash. I'm still in debt and my credit is horrible, but I've always struggled financially most of my life. I'm still depressed and now I feel awful because I raised kids the way my mother raised me and my parents have always been a big part in their, in their lives, so I know they were affected too. I see that I messed up my kids emotionally and neglected them as well. My question is, how can I help my kids through it when I am still struggling emotionally and I am easily triggered? I have a hard time just making appointments and my drinking is still a problem. 
I've always been a social drinker, but now I am addicted and I don't know where to even start. I have two teenagers and a two-year-old. I have no support system and I don't know where to get it or who to trust. I thought once I moved, I would feel better, but I'm actually not. I've actually gotten worse. It's been over two years and I'm still a mess. Any advice or tips to speed up the process would be appreciated. Thank you for your time and your videos. I truly appreciate you. Sincerely, Anonymous. Well, I'll tell you this, Anonymous. I'm glad you said all that at the end. <clears throat> you have problems. Okay, and I see in your story a lot of narcissism in yourself, you know, maybe as a protect, as a protective tactic. The first thing that has to go is the booze. It has to. No if, ands, or buts about it. It's poison. It is straight poison. And with two teenagers and a two-year-old and your teenagers are already acting out and getting into trouble, you got problems that you need to get ahead of real quick. Okay? Letting you're letting the teenager's father off the hook because he decided to have more kids. He needs to step in and be an authority figure, too, if you're still around there. You can't just have a new family and then screw the old family. It's not how it works. I understand you don't have a support system. So you know what it is, <clears throat> Anonymous? You went no contact and didn't even realize it. You tried to go no contact and didn't even realize why or how you were doing it. Who was the problem? But you knew you had to get away. You knew you had to get away. You had to separate yourself from the issue. Even though you didn't realize that at the time. You realized you needed this fresh start. They needed distance to do Now that you know what narcissism is, now that you know, now that your parents are gone, no contact should be much easier. <clears throat> the booze is a bitch. That's got to be the first thing to go is the booze. Without that, I mean, it's all going to be useless because you don't even remember what you do. You got a DUI. You might have been making out on New Year's Eve and don't remember it because you blacked out. I mean, you admitted yourself this is a problem. And you're struggling emotionally. It's got to go. Is the booze more important than your children? I should hope not. But you went no, tried to go no contact, and you didn't even realize it. So there's something in there that's telling you you need to be away. You know this needs to happen, or you need to keep them away. As far as your kids go, I would be very honest with them and say, look, I'm screwed up. I screwed up, but we got to fix it. I'm sorry. I got to fix it. If you can at least admit to your kids now that you have a problem and you know you did bad stuff and you screwed shit up, that's a huge step. The booze has got to go, though. It's got to go. And that's really the best advice I can give you. There's no speed up process on this. I've been dealing with this for 10 years now. It's You're going to continue, you're going to continue, you're going to continue. I can give you, you get more answers if you know if I know more about what caused all this to begin with. You're giving me the after effects. I don't know any of the lead up. And the lead up all has to do with your parents. So, hope to hear from you again. But, Thank you for sending in your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to Sylvia for sponsoring it as well. I appreciate it as well. 
So thank you to Anonymous and Silvio. Thank you for everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype, phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who can't afford it, or just sponsor the channel in general, or even sponsor Charlene and her artwork, you know what to do with the PayPal, and email links in the description box, and if you're still unclear, wait for the instructional video link to pop up on the screen at the end of this video to walk you through all of that. Please like and share this video wherever you can, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been the Narcissistic Resistance. Bye.